Hello, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Ram. Been a while since I've done a plane reviews episode thingy, hasn't it? First of all, though, I'd like to announce one quick little thing. If you're annoyed by the GTA 5 videos that I posted the past couple of days, sorry, they're gonna keep coming. I'll try to make them be like every other day. I, I definitely won't be like, only GTA! Oh! I will definitely try to do other stuff as well, but I am very much enjoying GTA 5 as it is right now on PC. It is very nice, it's v it's a very good port, it's, it's, it's just really fun and a lot of fun and good and I've been wanting to play it a lot and I will be playing it a lot and I will be recording playing it a lot. So yeah, if you don't like it, just skip those videos and watch the other stuff that you do like. I mean, that's kind of how I do YouTube and I think it's not a bad way to go about things. Anyhow, I'm here to review a plane. Well, more than one plane. This was created by Robert Hammond, and I think it's uh, the, the, the engines are slightly angled inwards, which is slightly less efficient. Let's see, low takeoff speed and flies as if on rails. <laughs> uh, not when coming in for a landing or taking off to mind the tail. I think you meant note that when coming in for a landing or taking off, mind the tail. SAS is recommended for a smooth landing. All right, let's give it a go. And here we are with the static EV. There we go, they popped up now. And I like the tail on this thing. Let's see, okay, so we're gonna, we're actually gonna have the throttle on very low right now. Actually, even lower than that. We're not even gonna get to the point where we have thrust effects because I want to see how low of a takeoff speed this thing can really have because that just intrigued me that it's like, oh, it's very low takeoff speed. So I'm going to try to do that now. It's obviously not going to be at 12 meters per second, or 14, or 18. However, it is starting to pick up now at 20. So let's see. Of course, mind the tail, as we were warned. This is actually a time where I would like the old SAS ability to just lock on a target and stay there, rather than just being stability assistance. There we go, 31 meters per second, 32 meters per second is about where we managed to take off with this thing. So, now that we're in the air, it's time to go full throttle and also turn off the SAS because I want to see how well this thing will fly without it. Dips down a bit. Pretty smooth. Fairly maneuverable. I imagine we're going to get to go pretty fast as well because of the aerodynamics not really caring about the fact that we have a giant wing as much as it would if it were more realistic and uh, once again I'm gonna mention can't wait for the more realistic aerodynamicers of the future Kerbal Space Program yes I know I said that very strangely don't worry about it so yes um, now I'm thinking I'm imagining if we have the thrust on much lower that it would fly better without SAS yeah because the engines are angled slightly up so they're actually doing like a uh, pitching force down on the main craft, which is interesting. And uh, like I said, the, the slight angled outwardness, I understand why you did it. You did it for aesthetic reasons, basically, I'm assuming. But that does make them slightly less efficient. I probably would have just glued them on, although it wouldn't have looked as good. I suppose it is it, it, it one thing I did notice right away when I saw this is the engine design is very unique you don't see engines being designed like this in KSP typically which is very interesting I, I also really like this tailplane the very thin narrow vertical stabilizer very wide tail very wide wings of course as well it's very interesting and SAS is encouraged for smooth landing okay suppose I'll turn that on. Oh, I suppose I should put the landing gear out as well. I mean, if we're going to land, typically you'd want landing gear. All right, let's land it as sideways as we can. And that's why you don't land sideways. Ah, very nice. We even get to watch the flamey bit. So next up, we have a plane by Heroic Stumpy called The Box Mark 1, which I can 
immediately see why it's called the Box Mark 1. And I've been told that this is an SSTO. Oh, I just noticed the extreme angle on the wings. That makes a lot of sense when you hear what I was about to say. This is an SSTO. It is supposed to be able to go to Duna and back, which explains the extreme wing angle because the extreme wing angle like that would be very useful for both flights on Duna and flights in the upper atmosphere of Kerbin, as well as probably for takeoff speed here on Kerbin. That probably helps us take off a bit quicker without having to pitch up violently. Then again, the, the, the tail design. I love the tail. Oh my god, I love this design! It doesn't even matter if it works, I love the look of it! Okay, yeah, it does matter if it works, because, you know, what good is something that's pretty if it doesn't do anything? But this is very pretty. Very, very pretty. Okay, so let's see. Jet engines, rocket power. Okay. So I could try to take this to orbit, but I have a feeling that would... Oh, I accidentally turned on the RCS, that was, uh... Oh, I thought one turned on the jet engines. Uh, one appears to not actually be capable of turning on the jet engines, as evidenced by the fact that I'm now mashing the button and nothing is happening. So, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. So, the action groups got messed up somehow, and I'm actually, I'm not going to pitch up at all. In fact, I'm going to turn off SAS, and I'm going to see how this thing behaves when you just full throttle along the runway. Because I'm imagining with those angled wings, it taking off on its own, or at least trying to take off, but then again it might kind of try to crash into the ground instead depending on how KSP physics decide to handle this. As you might have noticed, the center of lift is actually really far back according to KSP aerodynamics that are slightly wrong and we're dead. Alright, so here we are on the runway again. I forgot what I was about to say, but um, obviously that did not work as intended. Let's try a more traditional takeoff method that is, you know, SAS and pulling up this time around and see if that handles uh, slightly better. Wow, this thing has a really high takeoff speed, but here we are in the air and other than the fact that we have to continuously pull up in order to keep it from giving up on life, the uh, center of lift, I mean the, uh, not center of lift, the uh, velocity vector compared to where we're actually pointing is, uh, well I was about to say is more reasonable than a lot of things, but then it kind of dipped a little, so that kind of sucks. But, it has balls. Sorry, I just happened to notice those sticking out right at that moment, so I had to be like, hur hur, dumb joke. But yes. I've noticed this design, a uh, similar concept here, with the F-22 that I was reviewing recently, well, relatively recently, it feels like a long time, but it wasn't that long ago, that uh, this idea of using some wings for the outside and then an actual intake on the inside, it's a cool idea. I very much like that idea. Now, I could try to fly this thing into space, but we all know how incompetent I am, as well as how long that would take. So instead, I'm going to fly it upside down, because this seems like a much more reasonable thing for me to be doing right now. I would very much love to see a picture of this in orbit, or a save file of it in orbit, and then I'd like, to, or, or, ooh, in orbit of Duna. I would love to land this thing on Duna, or, or even just a save file of it landed on Duna, and then take off and try to get back into orbit of Duna. I just, I have to admit it, I'm, I'm just too lazy to try to do that myself. It takes so long to do that. I'd just be sitting here going, ah. Uh. I mean, well, it's not so much that I'd be bored doing it as it is it would make for a boring video. Or I'd have to just, like, cut out that bit and then and then it would be just, I don't know. Hmm. I'll have to consider that. As you might be able to guess by the fact that I've edited in a clip of me saying that, as you're about to probably guess from me doing this thing, and now I'm going to start going into recursive loops forever. As you might have noticed... I'm actually continuing to fly this thing as if an attempt to get into orbit. I will vaguely attempt to get into orbit. If I can do it without really trying, then awesome. If I can't, well, damn. Alright, so I'm getting fairly close to burnout on this engine. I'm also going fairly fast through the atmosphere. And, uh, whoa, 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 I didn't mean to pitch down like that. 
Yeah, I didn't mean to pitch up like that either. Yes, I've been actually going the very slow... Well, I say very slow, I'm going extremely fast. I've been going the very slow approach... Approach? Approach to orbit. Just going at a very shallow angle, very slowly going up until I run out of ability to fly with this main engine and then I'll just shut it down and I'll activate the others which will happen any moment now 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 <laughs> uh, engines always outperforming God damn it, engines! I didn't want you to outperform. I wanted you to regular perform, which is kind of a dumb line. Let's pretend I didn't say it, okay? All right. Come on. It's gonna happen any moment now. No, not not gonna happen. I'm still speeding up too, so I mean, like, I'm I'm perfectly fine with this. Oh, there we go. And now we've got full speed on those engines, and we're gonna pull up to. About a 45 degree angle. Our app ups is at 45 kilometers. We're gonna see, let's see, it's going up to 46. And now it's 47. There we go. Yeah, it's kind of slow, but it's working. 60 kilometers. 70 kilometer app ops. Is. I'm actually gonna throttle down now, and I'm gonna shift to pointing directly at the horizon. Well, ever so slightly below the horizon. Wrap up this is at 75, 76 kilometers. 77. Our, ap our uh, periapsis is at negative 75 kilometers. Rapidly dropping of course. Negative 65. I'm actually going to cut the engine now. Our uh, app ups is at 81.31 kilometers. Why is our engine on? I shut this thing down. Wow. That was weird. Alright, and now we're about 30 seconds from Apoapsis, so I've come out of time warp to stare at this black screen in my black room, because I need to go turn on a light now. It got dark while I was recording this. <laughs> dark in KSP and dark in the real world at the same time. It's almost like realistic time. No, it's not. Not at all. Anyhow, 15 seconds. T minus 13. 12. 11. 10. 9. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, no, 2, still, 2, 2, still, still 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, because obviously I'm throttling up, so it's changing, 0, and now we got some time, actually, because now our uh, perhaps is rising. It thinks we're in orbit. Well, we're close enough to orbit to where it's like, okay, I think you're going to be in orbit. And we've achieved orbit. And now we are in a nearly circular orbit. It's 83 by 81 kilometers. And I'm going to end it there. I mean, technically, this thing's supposed to be able to do more. But uh, for now, I'm going to end that part of the review there. Next up, and also last up for today, is also by Heroic Stumpy, the Aurora Mark V SSTO, which... Oh, it's a little, like, two-person in seats SSTO. Wow! I don't like the way these are clipped in here. But otherwise, kind of like in the style of this. Oh, it's got a uh, little, uh, whatchamacallit, it's got a, a probe body to control itself, and it looks like the front is ejectable which is awesome. It's got some little batteries there. It's got, yeah, I see the, see, I saw the Sepatrons and I saw a separator and I saw parachutes there and I'm like, this looks ejectable. And it is very ejectable. Also the staging, like there's, there's a hundred different clues. I'm not even sure what I noticed first. There's just a lot. Oh, it's a nuke based thing. So you have two jet engines to get you up into the sky and then you have a nuke to get you the rest of the way to orbit. Very interesting design. This one I am most definitely not going to fly into orbit, however, like I did with the other one, even though I said I wasn't going to with the other one, like I'm saying right now with this one. I'm really just going to do a somewhat futile ejection seat test. And the reason I say somewhat futile is the fact that there's no kerbals in there to actually save, but uh, whatever, whatever don't care just gonna oh there we go this thing can take off pretty quickly of course it's supposed to have the nuke disabled this low in the atmosphere obviously because else you're just 
wasting so much fuel completely unnecessarily. But, uh, in any case, let's see what happens when we hit the backspace button. Not exactly what I expected to happen. Oh, the piece did come detached, though. So that worked. Sort of. Yeah, SSTL is off to go crash that way. But as you can see, this is what the escape capsule looks like. Let's go... Yep, okay. I was gonna say, let's go see if we can switch back to this. In time to watch it fall. No, not in time to watch it fall. Okay, it's not actually falling anymore. It, it's uh, fine. Which is why we need to turn around and go crash it, because we can't have things being fine. Also, I just checked action groups 1 and 2. They didn't appear to do anything. I thought they would, seeing as, you know, the last one was supposed to use action groups 1 and 2. But unfortunately, that does not seem the case. Oh, that still hasn't landed. Okay, well, no worries. Um, see, what we're going to do with this is we're going to safely dispose of it in the VAB. And by that, I mean crash it into the VAB at high velocities. Because that's how you safely dispose of things in Kerbal Space Program, right? I mean, that's how I always safely disposed of things. Well, that's how you're supposed to do it. Then again, could be wrong. I don't know of the altitude of the thing I'm trying to hit, so uh, let's just hope. Yep. And uh, good thing this is a plane review series, because we have no way to review rockets now. Ah, very nice. Thanks for watching. As always, see you in space.